Welcome to the Psychology World Podcast. I'm O'Connor Whiteley, bringing you psychology news, articles and other interesting psychology related articles. Here where I can find the podcast notes and more interesting psychology related things and here where I can get your free 8 psychology book box set at ConnorWhiteley.net. Now let's get on to the show. Hi everyone and welcome to episode 94 of the Psychology World Podcast with me Connor Wiley and it is Monday the 10th of May 2021 as I recall this and as a reminder of last week I'm recording this one early early just so I can focus on my exams but I will be back next week live and this episode is on how do narcissists use a cult leader tactics so this is an absolute brilliant episode. I absolutely loved writing this. I was just so, so excited about it <laughs> because I absolutely love coach psychology, the psychology of a coach though. So after writing this, I think I might do a few more coach psychology ones in the future simply because I think it's such a brilliant topic in psychology. <laughs> So as this is a a pre-recorded one, there's no psychology news section this week and there's no personal update. So as always, I always love to know your thoughts and feelings on today's episode. So you can always email me, connorwhitely at connorwhitely.net. You can always leave a comment on the show notes at connorwhitely.net forward slash podcast. And you can always tweet me on Twitter at sci-fi whitely. And this episode has been sponsored by social psychology a guide to social and a cultural psychology because as i was writing this i was finding out that oh yeah this draws on that area of a social psychology oh yes yeah, so this draws on another bit and this is a clinical psychology episode but it's also really heavily based in a social psychology so if you really want to understand today's episode in a lot more depth especially like narcissism, self-esteem, social comparison and all of those wonderful social psychology topics. You've you've got to get this book though uh, because it's a new edition. It only came out like last month and is a pack full with great information. Really easy to understand and it goes into so much depth about social psychology from like social influence to the social group and also like to persuasion and I think in between though. So this is a brilliant book. I absolutely loved advising it. So I cannot recommend this book enough. So that is Social Psychology, a guide to social and a cultural psychology, available on all major ebook retailers. And you can get the ebook directly from me at payhip.com forward slash Connor Wisely. Buying a direct is a great way to support authors. And you can also buy the payback, large print and hardback version from Amazon or your local bookstore or your local library if you request it. So we're moving on to the main content part of today's episode. So we're going to be talking about how do narcissists use cult leader tactics. Brilliant topic. So as we know, people that are high in narcissism have very high self-esteem. But this does come from an insecure place though. Right? Because narcissists would be perfect because you could never put them down essentially. And it is like, good to have high self-esteem. But not when it comes from an insecure place. Because this means when their self-esteem is threatened... This causes them to be defensive and hostile. But this does mean that they do try to influence and uh, and control other people around them. Just that other people don't threaten their self-esteem. And the very interesting thing is that the tactics narcissists use to control and manipulate others have a lot of similarities with cult leaders. Which as soon as I read that I was like, yes, this is a podcast episode. <laughs> The first tactic that they use is they act larger than life, which we already knew anyway. Because a narcissist and a cult leader, if you've ever seen one in real life, I've seen a narcissist, I've never seen a cult leader in real life. But they do act larger than life because they want others to see them as these wonderful people with innate goodness and they have special knowledge that no one else knows about. And they believe that nobody is above them. And then for cult leaders, this will make sure that the cult members don't question them. But for narcissists, acting larger than life means that people around them don't threaten their self-esteem because they're special and they're gifted with secret knowledge. (laughs) It's actually quite amazing just to see what we tell ourselves, just so we can feel special and important. Important and in a social psychology, that's known as optimal distinctiveness or it links in to that topic. So the second tactic is questioning is not tolerated. So in codes, questioning is horrific. You just do not do it because it's just fundamentally wrong. Because if you question the coat, 
its leader or its a purpose, then you will quickly become ostracized and socially excluded because in the eyes of the cult, you've just committed heresy. It is just such an unthinkable thing because, <laughs> because it basically is a case of how dare you question the all-knowing leader. And as cliche as that is for books, TVs and films, I think they've actually got it right there. And that's big coming from me though. What this means is that narcissists can use the same trick because if they exclude or become rageful at people who question them, then the people around them will know not to question the narcissist and this gives the narcissist some level of control over their behaviour. Additionally, the reason why questioning is so terrible for narcissists is that because this is a direct threat to their unsecure self-esteem because you could be implicitly implying in your questions that they're wrong or they don't know what they're talking about. And this most certainly decreases their self-esteem because if anyone has said that to us, we will also be quite upset. Number three, lies are repeated so often and this is quite a short tactic though. With the co-leader being in such a high regard and never being in the wrong, this means that when the co-leader repeats their lies so often, this all means that the co-leader can actually repeat their lies so often that the cult members believe it and narcissists can do it the same way because all they need to do is keep telling the people around them the same lie and how wonderful they are and over time the people around them will start to believe it as the truth which I think is really, really scary. Number four, the righteousness justifies the means and I had to laugh at that because it's such a weird idea. So if we continue with the idea that the cult leader is perceived to be righteous and almost divine in some cases, it should come as absolutely no surprise to you and for this you only need to look back at the cults that have popped up and mainly in the US over the past 50 years, for example, Wacko or yeah, I think that was a cult. I'm thinking of the religious cult where the cult leader killed them all and there was a standoff between him and the FBI. I forget what it was called, I'm pretty sure it was um, wacko. So it should come as no surprise that cults that take part in ag- or ag- activities that, <laughs> that, are, that us normal people, they we just would not do it because it goes against our moral and our ethical code. But the reason my cult members don't have a problem with it is because the cult leader says it's a fine. So the cult members, I believe it must be okay because the leader said so. And if we think about narcissists, they do do <laughs> some immoral behaviours at times. For example, shouting, screaming, and sometimes they do attack people that threaten their self-esteem. But if the narcissist has a control and influence over those around them, then they will most probably deem their behaviours as a reasonable meaning that the narcissist's righteousness justifies at the end of result, which is the screaming, kicking, the punching, or, or whatever they decide to do. So the last one is, independence is punished. So a while ago, and I think it was around episode 50, I think I was reading an article on the psychology of our codes on Psychology Today, which is a great website, by the way. And I remember this point being erased in one way or another. And what it was, was that it was the writer of the article said that she was invited into a cult and she wanted to socialise with some of the other members. But the cult leader moaned at her because she was apparently interfering, interfering with God's time. That, that was just a bit of an eyebrow raising a moment. I'm thinking, really? Consequently, cult members are meant to be dedicated to the cult and they're meant to be one with the cult. Otherwise, they are punished for the independent and this punishment can include social exclusion, ostracism and the interesting thing though is that people prefer to keep social bonds, even the ones that are bad for us and you can check that fact in my Psychology of Relationships book. Linking this to narcissism, so narcissists can control others around with this trick because if the narcissist punishes someone for not being devoted to them and to their great wonderful self-esteem, then this could cause the narcissist to have strong influence and control over the person by punishing them. So I really hope that you really enjoyed today's episode. I know that I did. I think psychology of a coast is an absolutely brilliant area. If you know some who would enjoy today's episode, then please tell them about it. I'm always really grateful when you spread the word about the podcast. And please check out Social Psychology, a guide to social and cultural psychology, available on all major ebook retailers, and you can get the hardback, paperback, and print book from Amazon or your local bookstore. So, have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you next time.
thanks for listening today i hope you enjoyed it if you want to see the show notes then please go to connorwhitely.net and if you want a free eight book psychology box set then please go to connorwhitely.net have a great day and i'll see you next time